All right, what's going on guys? How we doing? It's Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another top 10 video. In this one, we're going to be counting down the top 10 very best episodes so far leading into season seven for HBO's Game of Thrones. For the warning, of course, if you're not caught up on Game of Thrones, if you haven't seen the Season 6 finale yet. And I won't kid you, this is absolutely one of the most difficult videos I have ever had to make because there are so many incredible episodes of Game of Thrones at this point. It is really hard to just narrow them down to 10. It's really difficult. Some honorable mentions first before we get into our list. Uh, 605, The Door, Hold the Door, Hodor. Amazing episode, incredible episode very close to making the list but I couldn't put it on it versus some of these others. Uh, 603 Oathbreaker, another amazing episode from season 6. Loved the episode a lot. It was it was really great um, but again just narrowly doesn't make it. The Dance of Dragons which is 509. Another really great episode. Some really badass stuff with the dragons and Daenerys and that or dragon and Daenerys. Uh, another climactic season finale type episode. Very close. The Lion and the Rose 402. Amazing episode. Has one of the most memorable moments in the entire series with the death of Joffrey and 406 the laws of gods and men uh, specifically remember Tyrion of course being uh, on trial and just how incredible that was uh, how exciting that was to watch as a viewer I mean especially if you're a fan of Tyrion so there's so many others you guys can probably list and think of that really stuck out to you as some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones. These are the 10 that I could think of that uh, seem like to me made the most sense to be on the list and had to be in some way, shape, or form on the list in some way. Getting things rolling with number 10. Number 10 is The Watchers on the Wall. This is 409. This is going back a little bit of ways if you haven't watched season four for a while. Season four, an incredible season. It's got some of the best episodes from the series for sure. Um, this, of course, is the battle between the uh, the Wildlings and um, the Watchers on the Wall, the uh, you know the Night's Watch. This one features the death of Egret. So this is definitely for me one of the most uh, impactful episodes in the series for John, and because John has become you know our, our forefront character or survivor. Uh, uh, this is one I just had to have on the list in some way. This is one of those big battle episodes when you get to see the you know you got the Fens, you've got um, you've got the Night's Watch, you've got the Wildlings, and you've got John. Uh, questionable with regards to where his uh, allegiance lies. Is he is he with the Night's Watch still? Does he love Egret? Is he going to turn? Is he, is he with the Wildlings? Where is he at? You know, like it's just oh man, what an exciting episode! What an emotional episode for fans of John. It just had to be on the list. It's an amazing episode. It's kind of like our finale for season four, um, you know, or, or one of them, you know, because each season has a, a few episodes that really stand out near the end there. This one is one of them, 409, The Watchers on the Wall. Number nine is going to be going way back from season one. This one's going to be Baylor. So 109. So this episode is... Um, is definitely needs to be on the list in some way. I mean, this is our kind of our intro episode to what we're dealing with in Game of Thrones. You know, this episode right here really shows the viewer this series does not pull any punches. This series goes for the jugular. It does not make you think it's going to kill, you know, your your protagonist, your main hero, and not do it. This episode right here, and some of the others uh, that are on the list as well, really define what A Song of Ice and Fire, what Game of Thrones is, and how unpredictable the series is going to be. And if you're in it, if you're going to watch the series, you have to be okay with, and you have to understand that, they kind of take a more realistic approach to it versus a um, classical story, hero, villain, hero wins type of approach. This episode, incredibly shocking, incredibly emotional, and definitely sets the tone for the kind of series you're watching, and this is a different type of series. This is not what you usually would expect. This is not what you would usually watch. 109, Baylor, incredible episode. Um, shocking, crazy, all those, all those uh, words that can come to mind. In insane episode, absolutely. So it has to be on there, definitely. Number eight, Mother's Mercy, 510. I mean, shame. 
shape. <laughs> so uh, I had to put this one on there in some way. I mean, this was an amazing finale for season five. Of course, for Cersei, you know, and her setting her up and, and her wanting to get her revenge afterwards, setting us up in season six for some incredible stuff with her. And, um, you know, kind of an unexpected twist, unexpected turn. Very interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> and, um, you know, one of the most kind of uh, just, just, just weird. <sighs> How do I describe the final, you know, the, the, the shame scene? Just just so weird, the Walk of Atonement and everything. Just crazy, man. But it's got to be on there. It's an incredible episode. So that's number eight, Mother's Mercy. Number seven is going to be The Children, 410. So this, of course, is the final episode for Tywin in the series. This is where Tyrion escapes and gets his revenge on Tywin. And... Um, you know, his father. You also have some amazing action sequences in this one, too. Uh, some really cool stuff with, you know, Stannis and uh, Mance and that, and John. Um, just all around, a, an incredible episode, and definitely one that sticks out to me in memory. Very memorable, because it's kind of like the end of the Tyrion and his family type of uh, story that was going on through season uh, four. This is how it ends, and Tyrion, um, you know, he doesn't pull any punches either. He he knows what his father is. He knows he's his father's son, and yet he's going to do it. He's going to do it anyway. You know, he's going to do what he's going to do. So it's a great episode. I love the children. It's really well-rounded. I've watched it a bunch of times because I think it's so great. Uh, awesome episode number seven. Number six is going to be from season two. This is kind of like the season two finale, 209. This is Blackwater. So Blackwater is one of the best action sequences or, or action-based uh, war-type episodes I've ever seen. At the time, uh, by the end of Season 2, it was my favorite type of uh, battle episode ever. Since then, I think Game of Thrones has surpassed it. But at that time, it was something incredible that I didn't even think we were going to see in the show, something of that magnitude and that scale. It was incredible to see, you know, the wildfire, Stannis, and the way he just marches forward always, just stand and fight. He never gives up, just marches forward and forward and forward, uh, which ends up being his undoing later. Um, yeah, man, just a great episode. bronze has got some cool stuff in it. Tyrion's got some great stuff. The Hound, any man dies with a clean sword. I won't say the rest. I'll rape is something, something. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, it's just incredible, man. You know, uh, Tyrion getting, you know, um, hacked and everything. It's just, oh, man, so good, number six. Now we're into the top five. Number five is going to be from season four, episode eight, 408, The Mountain and the Viper. This episode, even though it's only, like, if you compare it to Blackwater or some of these other episodes where you have hundreds of characters at, at battle, at war with each other. The Mountain and the Viper, it, it only has two, but the results of the battle affect, of course, Tyrion and uh, Tywin and, and, you know, the whole Lannister family. This one, for me, is, is really incredible. This is maybe the most excited I've ever, I've ever been for getting to see a one-versus-one type of confrontation in an episode. Um, the way it goes is kind of unexpected for new viewers who hadn't read the, uh, the books or didn't know the outcome. It was just very, um, very exciting to see all the way through. Getting to see Gregor uh, against um, you know the uh, the Viper and and just kind of the way the battle goes. You know, you think the Viper's going to win. You think he's got him, and it seems like a sure thing. Like he's already won. And then the comeback, and oh man, it's just so brutal at the end. Absolutely. So that's 408, and Oberyn, he was a great character, man. I, I liked Oberyn a lot. I thought he was really fun. He was funny and stuff, and, um, you know, he was definitely somebody you could get behind. He wasn't 100% just regular, you know, good, good, like Eddard, but, um, you know, he was he was definitely, his motivations made sense, and it uh, didn't take a lot to get behind him because we knew we knew already that the Mountain was, you know, and, and Tywin were brutal, brutal characters, absolutely, and, you um, it was an incredible episode. I remember the buzz and the excitement around getting to see the fight. It was crazy, man. Absolutely. So that's number five. Number four from season three, the season three finale, episode uh, nine, 309, The Reigns of Castamere. So The Reigns of Castamere, man. I mean, this episode... This was the saddest episode I've ever seen. I cried after this episode. I had trouble sleeping after this episode. It's, you know, it's partially because I get really into the shows because I do the reviews and hang out with you guys and do all these videos and stuff. You know, so, um, and, and I'm sure a lot of you guys love these too if you're watching this video. Obviously, you're not a usual fan. You're somebody who really loves the show, right? This one in the story, this one for me, this one got me, man. I mean, this one was just... 
the way it was done was brilliant. The, the, the graphic nature of it, the throat slitting and everything, the arrows and all, uh, and bolts and everything. I mean, I don't really need to say, I, I like the theme from this one. If you listen to the Reigns of Castamere, you can listen to the theme on, uh, on, on YouTube and it just brings back all those kind of feelings and memory of what happened in that episode and how, how crazy it was, man. Oh my God, what an insane episode. Kind of similar in some ways to Baylor in terms of feel, but just a bigger scale and also unexpected. You wouldn't think that after Eddard, of course, is killed and then his son goes to take revenge, it's like you're trying to figure out what kind of story this is. And you think it's gonna be, okay, his son is gonna get vengeance, for him, you know, that's the kind of story we're watching here, and it's not that simple. Nope, he doesn't. And um, it's just brutal. It's absolutely brutal. And some people, this may be their most hated episode they've ever seen. And I understand that. But the idea is that it gets emotion, it evokes emotion from the viewer, it makes you care, and it also leaves you in this weird place where you're like, well, what the hell's going to happen next? What's going to happen now? You know, it just leaves you in this really weird spot where it's like, well, I thought I had this figured out, and now I find out I don't have this figured out. Um, wow, incredible episode 309. Just insane. Episode, th or the the third, so episode 508, Hard Home, so the third best. Hard Home, I had to have on here, I mean, this is kind of like the undead episode. This is to getting to see the White Walkers in their full force at Hard Home. Um, you know, you've got some other parts in there too from, from other other uh, other locations. But John and the Night's King, I mean, just the face-off, right, and the setup. I mean, this is a huge episode for the series, hugely important. And the White Walkers have been an influence in the show since the very first episode, but we never really got to see them up until this point in full force. In this one, we do get to see them in full force, and it is more impressive than I would have expected it to be. It is just absolutely incredibly insane. So well done. 508, man. I, you know, I can't wait to see another battle with the White Walkers. It's coming. It's going to be probably the series finale type battle. Uh, probably season uh, 8, most likely. Maybe season 7. We'll see what they do with it. You never know with Game of Thrones, as unpredictable as it is. We just talked about the Reigns of Castamere. But Hard Home, man. Incredible episode. One of the best battle episodes ever. Absolutely number 3. Number 2, you want to talk about the best battle ever? The best battle you've ever seen in an episode? I don't see how you could go with anything other than Battle of the Bastards, 609. This episode for me, as soon as I saw it, was my favorite episode of any series I've ever seen. I love to see battle episodes. If you're talking which episode is my favorite, this is my favorite episode I've ever seen of a show. Not just Game of Thrones, period. Favorite episode ever. This episode, I mean, Ramsey is a villain. How could you not get behind Ramsey as a villain? I mean, or I mean, hating, behind hating him <laughs> as a villain. I don't mean like you like him. I mean, as a villain, you really hate him. You want to see him just be brutalized. You want to see him beaten. You want to see him lose. And this episode, because of all the stuff that happens prior with the Reigns of Castamere and with uh, Baylor, I, I felt a sense of uneasiness because I, I felt like I really didn't know for sure that Sansa and John were going to win. I didn't, I, I felt like, yeah, they probably will, you know, that's the kind of story this is. But then again, this is Game of Thrones, this is a Song of Ice and Fire, and what happened in the past. So you never, never know for sure. And that added a, a layer and a level of excitement to the episode, as well as a lot of the dialogue early on in the episode, really sets up the battle well, and it has the most impressive battle I've ever seen in, in an episode, especially just the way it's shot and everything, cinematography and everything, the angles and uh, the, the first person points of view and everything from behind John and all that. Oh my God, man, what an, an absolutely incredible episode. You wanna feel like what it's like to be right in battle like that? This episode gives you probably the best um, you know, type of um, example of what that would be like. It's just, just incredible episode. Amazingly done. Second best ever. Number one, the best episode ever. I got to go with the Winds of Winter, 610, of course. I mean, the, the setup from before with Mother's Mercy, Cersei getting her revenge, all the deaths, Arya getting revenge on uh, Walder. I mean, think about all the tie-ins it has with some of these other great episodes. Uh, you know, you had the Reigns of Castamere. Now you have that storyline kind of ending because Arya has gotten revenge for the Starks for that. Um, you've got the Stark banners, you know, of course, just uh, in Battle of the Bastards and that just uh, going down in, in Winterfell. You've got Cersei eliminating her enemies in King's Landing. You've got Daenerys finally, I mean finally, 
leave. I mean, we have been waiting so long to see her freaking leave and, and, and come into the main story. You know, it's just, oh man, just amazing. Setting up Cersei as like the ultimate bad guy of the series, which she always kind of has been, but she's kind of been like a closet bad guy where it's like you kind of knew her potential. But there was Tywin, there was these other great villains in the series, and she didn't, Joffrey, she didn't really get her time to shine. She got pushed around a little bit. No more being pushed around. She comes out to the forefront as the most badass villain in the series so far. You had Ramsay the others no no Cersei yeah she's pretty much the best ever for sure um as a villain easy to hate you know all that good stuff you guys know how Game of Thrones does their villains great villain uh setting us up for what should be one of the most incredible seasons of a series ever season seven and then eventually season eight so there's my top 10 list, guys. Write yours in the comments below or maybe some of your uh, favorites or which ones you think are the best. Remember, you, which one you like the best, your favorite, and which one you think was done the best are different. This is a list of which ones I think are done the best, not necessarily my favorites. Like I said, Battle of the Bastards is probably my favorite, but I do think the Winds of Winter all around, if you look at it, has more things that are impactful to the series and uh, is a crazier episode and you know it has to be in the first, first place spot. So write your comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Top 10 best episodes of Game of Thrones ever. That's what I got for you guys. That's that's the list and the priority that I see them. Uh, write yours below. And uh, if you like this video, please, guys, not an easy video to make. Please don't forget to thumb it up, man. It helps out the video. You can share. You can favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe, dudes, please help out the channel. You want to see more Game of Thrones videos from me? I can oblige. I can make them every day if you want. But you got to do those things. You got to like. You got to favorite. You got to share. And you got to you got to sub. That's what you got to do if you want to see more videos. So subscribe if you're new. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys again real soon. Hopefully for another Game of Thrones video. It's Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See ya.